We've talked about gear, now we're going to talk about software. Frequently, one of the things we do in our business is we do SCADA assessments. People will engage us to take a look at where they're currently at and help them build a plan for moving forward. And they'll, I'll say, well, what do you got? Show me your SCADA system. They walk me back into a room and they show me that. Can anybody tell me what that is? It's a, yeah, so, so, yeah but, but okay, so, so what, right? <laughs> It's a server rack. Can you tell me what software is there, what communication is there, how it's wired together, you know, what tools they're using, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? No. So when you start getting into the black box, the SCADA, we, what we need to do is we need to kind of say, okay, what are the standard functions? So these are the standard functions. So this is a simple block diagram around a SCADA system. So... I've got my automation devices in the field. My automation devices in the field are an important part of my SCADA system because that's what actually controls. That's what creates the data. And most people, if, if you ask them, they will tell you that the real data lives out here. This is the real data. This is not the real data. Okay? The real data is in the automation devices. I have tools to get the data up so I can do things with it. Okay? I've got my telemetry. I've got my communication software packages, and then these are the basic components of my SCADA system. I've got my real-time database. My real-time database gives me the last value that I got the last time I pulled every device in my system. So when I request information from the console, I'm not actually going out to the device and polling what I'm doing is I'm going to the real-time database and showing you what I last got when I polled. So why would I do it that way? Versus every time I bring a screen up, polling for the data, which is what a DCS would do. Performance, absolutely. Performance and what that does to latency and how long I have to wait and so forth, right? And in general... Most of the queries I'm making in a pipeline control center, I don't need to know what it's doing right now. I need to know what it's been doing for the last little bit of time. So, you know, last poll is good enough. The historian keeps an image of every data value I got up to the real-time database. So I can do pretty trend charts and see what was the pressure at this point over a period of time. The HMI is the package that we use to build all the cool screens with the pretty graphics and, you know, circles and numbers and all that kind of stuff so that we can understand what's going on in the process. And the alarm system is what's monitoring all these values to see if they go outside of bounds and then sending you a notification that, hey, you might need to do something because this process is out of where I want it to be. So those are the basic pieces of a SCADA system. And then there's other things on the back end, um, nearly every SCADA system we touch, the data is going to a measurement accounting system behind the SCADA system. All right, so this, again, so what I'm doing is I'm taking that overall data flow and I'm breaking it down into pieces. This would be a simple control system. So if I'm putting in a control system at a compressor station, this is all I need. I don't need all that stuff for EFM and measurement and all that kind of stuff. If I'm just collecting measurement data, but I'm not doing any control, I'm not doing monitoring, then I just need these pieces. If I'm doing automatic meter reading, so automatic meter reading is residential gas meters, residential electric meters, where I'm reading lots and lots of meters, and I read them maybe once a day or once a month, right? So there's more processing going on after I collect to kind of normalize all the data. But again, that's all the pieces that I need. Now, in all of this, there's kind of four types of data that we focus on. One is real-time or process data. So most SCADA systems, what they primarily focus on, what they're primarily about is the real-time data. Pull the data, bring it up, store it, trend it. Pull the data, bring it up, store it, trend it. So those kind of things are current pressure, current flow, current temperature, et cetera. We also have what I, what I would call retrospective data. So that's data that gets to put together looking backwards. So 
totalized volume, averaged pressure, average DP, that kind of stuff. The reason I make the distinction is not because it looks different in terms of how it's pulled and brought up, but it's handled differently in terms of how it's presented in the HMI, right? So this is starting to get clear about what is the data and what do I need to do with it? How do I need to interact with it, right? I have array data, so measure, look, I pull a chromatograph and I've got all the compositional elements and does it normalize to 100%, that type of thing. And then I have my full measurement audit trail. So these are the kinds of data, and the way I interact with these data in the HMI is different. So here's the point. Here's, here's what I would like for you to take away about this conversation. Use the software for what it's most effective to do, right? So I've been asked many times, can you put video in a SCADA system? And there are tools out there to do it. Long Watch is one of them. But why? Because the tool is not really designed for handling video. It's making sense, right? So use the tool for what it's designed for. So SCADA systems are designed for reliability, redundancy, critical process control, contextualizing the data in a way that I can understand what's going on in the process. Now, there's two basic kinds of implementation of SCADA. One would be what I would call a hybrid, which is I get this vendor's HMI package and I get this vendor's historian and I get this vendor's polling package and so forth. At some level, all SCADA systems are a hybrid, right? Other products, Signet's a good example, Oasis is a good example, they are monolithic, meaning all of the feature sets are available in that software package. So the trade-off is hybrids, you can get best of breed for all the various things you need to do, but you can have integration challenges. Monoliths might not be best of breed for all the different feature sets you're looking for. Um, I should make a comment about OPC. So OPC is Olay for process control. Uh, you know, the, it, it is the primary mechanism for moving real-time data between devices and software applications. You should be aware that there's two kinds of OPC. There's OPC DA, which is OPC data access, and it's based on Windows COM DCOM. So that OPC only runs on Windows, and it requires you to be creative about how you configure COM. So it works great within a machine, okay across a local area network, and not at all across a wide area network. OPC Unify, UA, which is universal access, is the new standard for OPC, and it has encryption, built-in tunneling, um, security control down to the tag level. Most software products will tell you, yes, I support OPC. Many of them do not support UA, they only support DA. So just kind of FYI. Um, almost all SCADA systems, the database in the real-time database and in the historian is proprietary because these things are optimized as a very flat data structure. I got a list of points and the last value I got, and that's all I got. So there's not a lot of you know, relational tables and complex indexing, and they're optimized for speed. The real-time database is what makes sure I get the data in a second or less when I ask for it, right? Likewise, the historian is, some of the historians are SQL-based, but by and large, they're proprietary as well. So while some, like ClearSCADA, for example, has a SQL interface, but it's still a proprietary data structure. They just, they have, they kind of support a simple subset of SQL queries and they expose their, their database as SQL. <clears throat> when I start moving data directly, so typically if we, do, if we were to do a SCADA system and it involves measurement data collection, we do not take the measurement data, the full audit trail, through the HMI. We take it directly into the measurement accounting system. 
there's really no value in the HMI for all of that data. That value is really only valuable in the back office measurement system. So there are some exceptions to that, but again, it's kind of important to understand that that kind of data movement, oftentimes it's file transfer because most of the back office measurement systems, FlowCal, PGAS, et cetera, the way they read data in is they're reading um, specified file formats. So in general, an integrated solution, a monolithic solution is easier to support because you got one vendor who you can say, I need you to fix this. Um, web-based solutions, if you have a need to get the data out to a lot of people, the web's the best way to do that. There's a lot of really cool technologies out there um, that are trying to leverage Internet of Things and big data analytics that are dashboard tools that are great for distributing data and contextualizing it for decision making. But don't, don't confuse yourself. Just putting data reports into dashboards is not really valuable. All of this data has to be contextualized so that people can use it to make decisions, right? Just what, what's going on for most of us in our businesses is we're drowning in data and we're starving for information, all right? I can get all the data I want and then some, but give me what I need to actually make a decision. That's a different problem. <clears throat> uh, the other thing, just kind of thinking about the future, Internet of Things, big data analytics, um, all of that stuff, in my opinion, is gonna be a transformational change in the industry. It's gonna take some time for it to roll out because we as an industry are late adopters of technology. You know, we don't, we don't adopt technology until five to 10 years after it's you know, common for everybody else. And there's reasons for that given the nature of our systems and how they're geographically dispersed. But anybody who's working in this business is gonna be in this business for another 10 to 15 years. You need to be looking at this because it's gonna change things, big time. So it's, this is something that, there's actually a bunch of cool TED Talks out there on Internet of Things and big data and what people are doing. And the whole approach to data management is radically different. There are people that are using things like Kepware to sample millions of data points from various systems and pulling all that together and getting analytical reports and doing that in seconds. It's, it's really amazing. So, the other thing about SCADA, <coughs> the key thing is, if I want a high performance, high reliability SCADA implementation, it's all about communications. There's two parts to that, or three actually. Three, there's the field data communications, there's the network communications, and then there's the internal application communications, right? So the polling engine's got to ask for the data and then it's got to be sent to the real-time database and it's got to go from the real-time database to the historian and if there's redundancy built in, then it's got to go to all the other places that need it to maintain the redundancy. So if you're evaluating a SCADA technology, you want to pay particular attention to that because if you have a problem with a SCADA product, it's going to be because of its internal messaging. 